Hello again. On my last video, I talked about the 2D lighting system I've created for my upcoming game. Enough people showed interest and asked me how it worked that I've decided to put up a second video answering just that question. So, by the end of this guide, you'll have an idea on how to make 2D lighting in your own projects. Before I go into details of the lighting system, there are a few things I need to note. First off, I'm using OpenGL. Doing this with a DirectX API might be a little bit different, I'm not completely sure. That said, the overall strategy should be identical. Secondly, there are a couple of different rendering techniques that you'll need to use to perform this lighting technique. You'll need to use a blending function to make sure your lights blend together nicely, a very simple shader, and a couple of frame buffers so that you can selectively render portions of your game into textures, which you can then render together. So, from now on, we're going to be heading straight into the lighting system. First off, I need to stress that you should ignore 3D lighting techniques. 3D light systems are a completely different problem. In 3D, there are a lot more factors that can screw you over, and all lighting systems are designed to deal with those issues. So, let's forget about shadow mapping and about shadow volumes, and look at the problem on its own. Let's take this to GIMP, and I'll explain the things in detail. First, we will want to render our scene without any lighting whatsoever into a texture. My testing map, for example, will look like this. Now, we'll want to render to a second texture. This will be our lighting mask. We will be rendering our lights into this, and they will affect the scene. For example, we could set everything to our ambient light, and then we could add a couple of lights. Now, to get our lights in-game, we would render the two textures together, multiplying their colors in a shader. The final product will look like this. With remarkably little effort, we have some simplistic lights going on. They don't cast shadows, and so they look kind of crappy right now, but it's enough for a very simple game. So, that's it. That's the fundamental base of my lighting system. It's extremely simple, but it's blazingly fast and is highly scalable. For example, what if we did want to have cast shadows? All that we would have to do is modify how we render the lights, and so that they are not able to project through geometry. An example lighting mask we might end up with looks like this. So now, when we change our lighting mask into that, we have a much more complex and interesting looking scene. To do this, I have a simple polygon clipping algorithm that I won't go into in this video, but it's overall a very simple problem. Additionally, with this system, it's very easy to have pre-calculated light maps to speed things up. You can either pre-calculate the geometry of the lights you'll be rendering, or you can pre-render everything into texture maps. Finally, there are a couple of concepts worth noting. First off, our scene without the lighting mask is essentially our scene when fully lit. Lighting is a way of making the scene darker. It's good to remember the simple concept. Secondly, when rendering to the lighting mask, you can blend your light sources realistically by choosing an appropriate blend function. If you want to save fill rate, you can make your lighting mask smaller than your actual scene and stretch it up to size. This may cause visual inconsistency if taken to extremes, but if reasonably applied, you can have a significant jump in performance with almost no perceptible difference. Finally, the simplistic lights I showed earlier that did not cast shadows don't work well for top-down games. However, they can look great in a side-scrolling game, as the difference between the foreground and background is already well established. Here's an example mock-up demonstrating this. The scene as it appears without lighting looks like this, and then when we add the lighting again, it looks much better. Once again, thanks for watching! I hope you found this simple guide helpful. My next dev video will focus on the new features I've put into my game, so stay tuned!